Hi, I'm Ken Fridley. Hi, I'm Tom Scanlon. And we're from Sunrise Telecom. We're going to be talking about RFC 2544 testing today using the Sunlight Giggy handheld. So when we talk about RFC 2544 testing, the first thing that's real important is you have to understand what media are you testing. Are you testing Ethernet, FIT, e, token ring, exactly, even though it really doesn't exist anymore. But it's important setting up that test. You have to use the proper frame sizes also. It has to be starting usually from 64 bytes all the way up to about 15, 15 18. 15? Yeah, 15, 18. 15. And your maximum MTU is determined also. If you're doing a mixed network, say you're testing from an Ethernet through, say, some type of FIDI ring or even token, any type of ring like that, you want to always use the largest MTU uh, for the network that you're testing through. Ken, I'd like to ask you, is there a specific frame size you have to do during the testing of the RFC 2544? Well, it really is interesting, Tom, is that if you look at the actual spec, it gives you a range of frame sizes you have to run. But really what it comes down to is what is your service level agreement, your SLA? If your SLA says that you only have to run a certain frame size or subset of frame sizes, you can just test around those frame sizes, and that's still a valid RFC 2544 test. So it's just a recommendation, it's not a rule that you have to run these tests specifically like that. Ken, we were talking about the four tests on the RFC 2544, and the throughput is the first one that normally everybody starts with. Yeah, it's pretty basic, really. As a throughput, you have to determine the maximum amount of traffic you can pass through your network. So really, that's what you're doing with the throughput. You load up the network or your device under test, your DUD as folks say, or your network under test, and say, what's the maximum amount of traffic I can actually throw through there? Uh, so you start at 100%, see if you lose any frames. If you don't, you drop down to 90, send the same thing. Or excuse me, if you do lose frames, you drop down to 90, send again, drop down to 80, see what you lose, until you get to a point where you can spend, send 100% of your traffic without dropping any type of frames, and then that's your maximum throughput. So you're dropping 10% at each interval. That's the recommended. Now, the granularity, it says, in the, if you read the 2544 specification, it says you have to do a minimum of 10% granularity, even though smaller increments are better. Obviously, if you're going at a gig E rate, 1,000 megabits per second, you drop 10%. Now you're at 900, that's 100 meg. Or if you move your granularity, say, to 5 meg or 5%, right. now you're dropping from uh, 1,000, now you're dropping down to 950. 950. So you're going to get a little tighter about what your maximum throughput is. All right, uh, we've discussed throughput. We're going to talk a little bit about the latency test. Absolutely, and latency is probably one of the more important tests, uh, especially now that RC2544, you don't just have one router sitting on your desk in a, in a um, manufacturing environment where you're testing that. What you're really testing is the entire network point to point. And uh, when we talk about latency... Um, Could be 10 routers. Yeah, 10 routers, you go through some access switches, uh, firewalls, anything like that can really increase your latency. Um, and when we talk about 10 years ago, when 2544 was actually designed, there was no VoIP, there wasn't any IPTV, uh, so latency is definitely important. Uh, we talk about actually the procedure, if you look at the actual document on RFC 2544, what you're supposed to do is actually transmit for a minute, send one specific frame that has a tag in it, wait for it to come back, and then let the system cool down, is what they say, for another 60 seconds. So if you look at doing a latency test, and the specification again says you have to run 20 loops of this for every frame size that you're running. So we're looking at two minutes per loop times 20 loops. Now we're at 40 minutes per frame size, and now you have to do every frame size. So this is where latency can be an extremely long test. So we're talking about the number of loops and the amount of time it takes to do a latency test. In reality, okay, how many times do you have to do this loop? 20 loops? 40 minutes to test per frame size. Service level agreement, maybe? Service level agreement. It's really what you guarantee your customer is how many times you're going to run that test. And if you're doing a repair, mm -hmm. obviously you're not going to run a full latency test. You want to take a snapshot, go back and look at your original test results, and say, okay, based on those test results, have I repaired it, put the loop back the way it was, or do I need to do some more repairs? So you're not going to run a full latency test. You're going to do a shorter one. And we're 
we're going to move on to the third test, frame loss test. It, frame loss test is very similar to throughput test. In fact, a lot of folks think it's redundant, but it's, it's somewhat different. Uh, again, what you're doing is you're starting at 100% of your maximum rate for each frame size, and then you send a certain number of frames, say 10,000 frames. Okay. And you say, did I lose any? No. Well, if I did, drop down to 90, drop down to 80, drop down to 70, that same 10%. Incremental drop. Yep. And obviously, if you want your granularity to be tighter, you set it from 10%, set it to 5 or 1 or whatever you want. Just remember, the tighter you set that granularity, longer the tests are. Longer the tests are. Nice thing is, because usually you're sending 10,000 frames. The spec says at least 10,000 frames, and that's usually what folks send. At a giggy loop, that happens in under a second. So you can wipe these things out really quick. But, you know, it depends on what you're running, too. Right, the last test we were going to talk about was the back-to-back -back test tent. Yep, and it's very, very close to every other test. Again, the RC2544 tests are similar in nature, mm -hmm. but back-to-back -back, what we're talking about is we're trying to load up the network as, as dense as we can with the same packet size. So we're hammering it over and over again with the same packet size. And that's important because if you look at it, if you're sending a 64-byte uh, frame size, you're losing about 23% of your actual over uh, of your total bandwidth just in overhead bits going through so it's really easy to load up your network very quickly so what you want to do is you want to test with back to back frames am i dropping anything at 64 bytes am i losing anything at 120 256 and we're incrementing each time with exactly you. same type of traffic but what we're doing is we're sending it at 100 percent do we lose anything if we do let's back down to 90 let's back down to 80 and we do the same process until we have two tests where we don't lose anything and that's where we have a passing test Ken, we've completed all four tests. What do we do now? Well, when you finish your four tests, uh, or your subset of tests, whichever you're going to run, RC2544 actually specifies how you actually report on that. So all these tests are auto-saved in the GIGI device. They're saved in a CSV type format. You can pull it over to the Sunrise Reporter software. It's free. We don't charge extra for it. And it puts in a really nice, clean report. You can put your own logo on it, the customer's name. So it really becomes a birth certificate for that circuit. You give it to a customer, and you know that the circuit's operating the way it should be. So you get a pass grade on your SLA at that point. Exactly. Very good. So the first thing you have to do when you're doing a 2544 test, obviously you have two devices. You have the main unit, the GIGI, and then you have the responder unit, which is just a passive device on the far side. So you really need to put your responder actually into a loopback uh, mode. So we're going to go over to loopback. We'll do a loopback mode. In this case, I'm going to do just a manual. You make sure that you have all your IP addresses in if you're doing layer 3, and press F4 to start, and it's sitting there waiting for you. Now we have the responder set up, you come over to the GIGI on the other side of your circuit and you can either run individual tests, the throughput, the frame loss, back-to-back -back latency tests individually, or what I suggest is you can do an auto test. Now you configure this auto test once, say you have an Ethernet network, you can save that as a profile. You can save up to four different profiles, so now if you have another network that's doing FIDI or something else, you can have a completely different profile for that. So you do this once, set it up once, and you run the test a million times the same way. So now that we're going to set this up, you go into say throughput tests, and all of these tests set up basically the same way. You press F2 for edit. You set up either a layer 2 or a layer 3 by pressing the F1 set. So we'll go back to layer 2 if it's a layer 2. You can set your VLAN tags. You press F4 for page down. And here you can set your test patterns, the test mode, how many seconds you're going to send, where you start, what the final rate is. Your delta is your granularity. So you start at 100%. Your granularity is set at 10% delta. It goes from 100% to 90 to 80 to 70 on down from there. Your frame size mode, you can either set it to user for individual Ethernet uh, packet sizes or any type of packet size, or you can do an auto and it'll automatically step through uh, the Ethernet frame sizes. So once the test is all set to go, what you're going to do is everything's set up to go. You're going to press F3 for test, and the test is going to start running automatically. So in this case, it's starting the throughput test. Once it's done sending, it'll come back and say test or fail, and it passed, and it'll continue on from there. So once the test is completed, you want to save your test results. You can set this up to happen automatically. In this case, I'm going to do it manually. So you press F3 for save. It comes up. You enter your uh, file name. You press F1 to save, and you're actually saved now. Now, you have a, a USB port on here also. If you put a USB drive in there, it'll save over to USB drive, and you can take it right over to your computer at this point. As a summary, Ken. 
Well, when we talk about RSC 2544, we talked about the four tests, the yes. throughput, the latency, back-to-back, -back, um, frame loss test. Right. So with those four tests completed, we've told you how to actually create the test report. Now, remember the RFC documents, 2544, 1242, all these are available on the internet. You can go in and do your favorite Yahoo, Google, Bing search you want to do for RFC 2544 or RFC. And there's actually a repository out there. You can pull all this out and look at it for more information. So if you want to dig deeper into the specifications, you can find that too. Absolutely. Or we'll have your uh, PowerPoint presentation that we have for you on the website as well. You can refer that just as a snapshot of what we talked about today. Excellent.